Oh yeah, oh yeah, let me pop this collar right here. 
Hey, what is up? I'm JG, as you know, from uh, AuburnSports.com on the publisher slash Commodore there. And uh, wow, what a night of basketball for the Auburn Tigers on a day where Matt Jones, fellow Transylvania University graduate, I think it was yesterday actually, went on Cole Kublik's show and said that he thought that the Auburn Tigers had the look of a, statistically had the look of a team that goes to the Final Four. Not sure how you feel from a Transylvania University graduate saying something like that, but we'll give him a pass this one time. Uh, yes, there was a drubbing going on, as Sam H. correctly identifies in the chat here. Uh, the Auburn Tigers, of course, victorious tonight, 101-61 to over the hated South Carolina Gamecocks, a team that uh, had climbed ahead of Auburn in the standings, uh, and uh, not so much now. Uh, and a huge home win for Auburn after struggling on the road uh, in Gainesville over the weekend. Uh, had a bad loss. Well, not, it wasn't, wasn't unseemly per se. It was just lopsided in a way that I wasn't expecting. Florida played a great game there. Auburn didn't respond well. But in the Nev, oh, things are different in the Nev. I believe Auburn's now 14-0, and something like that. Uh, inside Neville Arena could be 15-0. and And again, Auburn continues to keep its odd streak alive of Every single win is by double digits. They have now 20 wins, and they're all by at least double digits. Incredible. Uh, Really, really strange. (laughs) I mean, when they're good, they're great. And uh, this is a team that I don't know if I'm really ready to say that they're great just yet, but this is an outstanding team, a lot of depth. And they're showing an ability to – interesting – they're showing an ability to kind of uh, retool in real time. Um, and what I mean by that is we saw some of that tonight, right? We saw for the first time in 25 games, the 25th game we see this, Denver Jones plays, I believe he did two shifts uh, at point guard, and it's like, wow, this can actually work. And it gives you uh, some ideas how to deal with things later on in the tournament when you need another point guard and maybe Aiden gets hurt or Trey gets in foul trouble or you want to be more defensive and you can put um, KD out there, you can put Denver out there together. If you really want to pressure people on the perimeter, it gives you a lot of interesting ideas. I do have some super chats coming through that I want to call out here real quick, uh, including a big one from one of our favorites. I feel like a stranger, of course, one of our absolute favorites. Says, oh, if yeah, Ward Amigo, much love, Drainer, Swiggins, and Tates, especially Mama Tate. I'm going to be taking uh, Mama Tate out for a little visit tomorrow, her first time out of the assisted living facility since November. So that'll be fun, and I, f- I appreciate you thinking of me, brother, and her. I missed most of the game due to work. Uh, was it as glorious as it seemed? It really was. It got – there were stretches, man, where the game just got really, really nasty. Well, very satisfying from an Auburn perspective, from a, but from a neutral perspective – uh, it got a little bit hairy because Auburn was just a lot better and and um, South Carolina was just powering down. And there were, I think there were four uh, major fouls called, flagrant ones fouled in this game. Two against Auburn. Well, at least, I think it was two and two. It could have been three and one for, uh, against them as well. But some nasty stuff going on, just very pushy and, and shovey. And they were mad about losing. And, you know, I get it. I get it. There's frustration for sure. So, Flass, I appreciate you, brother. Always here supporting us. Mobile alum jumps in. She is fired up about this. One. War, damn, Eagle, just wow. JG, how are we going to do versus Kentucky? Great game. Big game coming up uh, against the hated Kentucky Wildcats, a team that I watched last night. They played host to Old Miss and uh, took care of business in a general sense. I think they won that game by 15, 17, something like that. And uh, that's going to be a big game. Uh, Five o'clock on Saturday. Another showdown for Auburn, but, you know, the thing is, Auburn is just so good inside Neville Arena. I'm not sure that – I mean, can can Kentucky win the game? Yes, Kentucky can win the game. Will Kentucky win the game? It seems unlikely to me. And what we saw out of this ball club today really encourages me because my – one of my biggest concerns about Auburn basketball coming into this game was I feel like they allow themselves to take too many bad shots. And they get lulled into this sense of false sense of security that they can just do whatever they want to do, a ball up, and they're going to go out there and win the game. Against better teams, you cannot do that. You've got to go into a game with an idea of what you want to accomplish on the attacking end and the defensive end, and you've got to actually do it. 
And when I'm talking about the attacking end, you've got to be patient and wait for shit to cur- to work out to for 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 plays to actually unfold as they are supposed to. And Auburn w- waited for that tonight. Auburn was patient tonight, looking for the right looks. They were fastidious in terms of shot selection. I thought they were at their absolute best of the entire season, being patient and looking for exactly what they wanted on the scoring end. And boy, did they get it. 101 points, including a two late from Jalen Harper, getting them over the uh, the triple digit mark, which was good. They, they finished at 99 a couple weeks ago uh, against Alabama, which was disappointing. <sighs> So, yeah, how are they going to do against Kentucky? I mean, I predict Auburn to win that game by 15-ish. I mean, I don't feel like I'm stepping out on a uh, limb there. Auburn's very, very good at home. Whale Driver says, is Broom trying to turn himself into a late second round or is a stretch four? It's an interesting concept, right? At Moorhead State, I think he took, I think he attempted five threes in, in two years. And this year, he's already up to probably 15 to 20 made threes. Just uh, this year alone, I was looking this up earlier. I, I don't know how many he actually had was my issue. Yeah, everybody's jumping in on the Ken Palm here. Uh, he came into the game 16 of 47. So, yeah, he has 20 made threes now. And he's up to like 35, 36%. So, he's doing work. Uh, sorry about that, Bob. I'm just uh, kind of getting things set up here, brother kind of getting our, our feet uh, below us, under us, as the kids would say. Uh, yeah, Broom's playing. He's having a great season. The, my issue, Whale, is that I wonder if his lack of athleticism uh, is going to affect him. There was a guy that played at Ohio State several years ago named Lawrence Funderburk. And to me, he was a similar player, and like he never really got any traction in the NBA. I mean, I think Janai is going to have a chance for sure. And he's one of the really, truly efficient and effective players in college ball right now. I think Ken Palm has him as the number three player in the entire country just from a statistical footprint perspective. And it's true. I mean, Auburn folks would not be surprised to hear that. He scores, what, 20 a game. He usually gives you 10, 12, 15 rebounds tonight, not as many. But he also gets some swats and he gets some steals too. He's just a, he's a stat filler, you know. He's a very consistent player. Performer T Park jumps in. Uh, one of our favorites, always supportive here, uh, both here and on the brain on the uh, Bourbon Channel that I do with Courtney on Thursday nights. LFG JGT taking my pops to his game in Neville this weekend. Outstanding! If you're going to pick one, that's a great one to do. Now the fighting Calipari's in there, and it's big game. It is uh, it's big game hunting in that one. You know Auburn. If they were to get a win over Kentucky, which I think Kentucky will be ranked at that point, like 20-ish, something like that. Uh, Still not a quad one situation for Auburn because I think Kentucky would be too far down the list at this point. But, hey, man, when anytime you got Kentucky in the Nev, I mean, it's still worth going, even if Auburn does own the D to Kentucky basketball after having wrestled it away from them in 2010. Hustle Mobile alum jumps in again. Uh, showing her support twice now. Uh, Terrence says, Funderburg, haven't heard that name in a while. I originally went to Indiana, right? Yeah. Um, I just remember him at Ohio State, but it absolutely could have been the case. I don't even know how I'd go back and find that. Hell, I don't know. I, I, I can't go back there now. I remember watching him at Ohio State and thinking, man, this dude balls up constantly. You know, he's just like a... He's just a big dude and got a lot done. And, you know, Janai, what's crazy about Janai is he's just, he's very thin. (laughs) I mean, I know he plays center and he certainly isn't like meek or small, but he's just, he's a thin guy. So, yeah, I think stretch four would probably be what you're looking for with him. And I think it's wise to, wait, hold on. Whale driver says easily quad one. Well, since. Since this game tonight against South Carolina was not easily at all quad one. In fact, it was quad two. I'll take a look at it. I was looking at the Nets earlier. Let me see where Kentucky's at. All right, Kentucky's at 24, which is a lot higher than I would have expected. So I believe that would sneak them in. Isn't it 25 at home? I'll have to look at that.
Home games in the top 30. So, yeah, it's quad one. This game today, I believe South Carolina was like 40-ish, 45-ish. So that didn't count as a quad one. Uh, Kilgore, what's up, brother? This is Wardam. What up, JG Wardam? Glad to have you, brother. And JR in the house as well. Can I get a follow JG Auburn X on Twitter? Uh, yeah, just let me know what's up, and I'll definitely do that. Uh, let's see. Justin C asks in the chat, JG, why is the why is the road so difficult for this team? Listen, man, I was looking at the best teams in the country today. These are teams that were undefeated at home, including Houston, UConn, et cetera, et cetera. And although Auburn had a losing record on the road, I think Auburn's three and four or four and five or or three and five. I don't remember. Uh, the other teams had trouble too. You know, Houston's had some gnarly losses on the road. So I just think in general, uh, it's tougher to win on the road, even for the best teams. So don't lose your mind when Auburn has these tough, difficult setbacks on the road because everybody's having them, essentially. Uh, Mobile alum says, uh, JG, your thoughts on Denver playing point. I love it. Um, his possessions were good. He had a turnover. In the first half, he had, let's see, a bucket. He had an assist. He had a really nice driving bucket. Then he had a turnover. I mean, it happens. And then he had another shift in the second half like that. I think it's because they're kind of slowing Aiden down a little bit. He was a 25-minute per guy, a minute, minute per game early in the game, early in the season, excuse me. He stacked down to like 15, and in fact, he might have been below that tonight. Well, he did get in late. Trey got 20 minutes. Uh, Aiden got 11, which is a season low for him. So, yeah, they're, they're still trying to pull Aiden back. And we've talked about this on the show that you know, Aiden is not playing at a level right now where you're expecting him, right? He His three-point shooting's off. His passing is tentative. Hell, his play is tentative. I feel like he's trying to operate, you know, in margins like this big in high school and they're tightened down now and he's just – he's thinking about it too much. Coy says, do we need to think about Aiden leaving since his minutes are dwindling? I mean, it's it's a constant source of concern, I think, in the current world of college athletics when a player is not flourishing at all at a place like Auburn. If, if a guy's not flourishing, you know, is he going to leave? When you're at a smaller school, when they flourish, they want to go up, you know. But at Auburn, I don't necessarily think you go up from here. Auburn's in the top group. So, um, I mean, just knowing Aiden, I mean, there's a lot to there's a lot to process between now and when a decision has to be made in, like, May or whatever. But Aiden, to me, seems like the kind that would stay. It's not like he's in a fight with the, with the staff. It's not like people within the program are unhappy with him or that he's unhappy with them. I think he he needs to get better. They're giving him an opportunity to get better. They're giving him the instruction to get better, and they're just looking for other ideas. I I, I think it's all handled very well. What's up, Tori? Good to see you on here, young lady. Uh, Raven jumps in with a super chat as well. We love Raven. Always supportive and always uh, a big part of what we're doing here on any of our shows. He says, 40-point W, we are just different in Neville. Now is the time that we can start ramping up for March. Can we sustain this level? you the man, J.G.? No, you're the man, brother. Yeah, they can sustain this level at home. I just wish the NCAA tournament was going to be inside Nev because I don't know if they would lose. Uh, Ravin asks in the chat, not in the super chat, but in the regular chat, is Aiden not taking to the coaching style? I know that they are tough. No, I think, I mean, BP can be tough on people, but he's not, like the kind of issues that Aiden is having, like that he's not tough on him for that. He doesn't – BP gets really mouthy with people who sulk and people who run their mouth. He don't. He doesn't like that in practice and stuff. Aiden doesn't sulk, and Aiden doesn't run his mouth. Aiden just isn't quite playing at the level that everybody expects him to, including himself. So they're just going to keep working with it, man. He's not a lost cause. He hasn't done anything wrong. I mean, he's, he's not playing at the right level, but he's not a problem. He's just a freshman still adjusting, and he will have time. Think about Trey last year. Trey was up and down all the time. And there were stretches, in particularly in the middle of last season, when Trey was just kind of like a dude, you know? He was just out there. He's a plus all the time now, but he's worked very hard to get better, and he's he's just made a lot of progress. Can credit him and credit the coaching staff. 
Moby Love with another super chat says, JG, what needs to happen for us to have a long run in the NCAA tournament? I think the short answer to that is got to be better at guard. I think they're very good at, well, in a lot of ways, they're very good at four and five. Sometimes I wonder if the bigger, stronger teams, the guy, the teams that have the really good centers and the really good power forwards defensively, so these are big players, the Mississippi States, Florida has some dudes like that. Like this guy, uh, this team we played tonight, Auburn played tonight, uh, B.J. Mack, he's a big dude, but I'm not sure he's quite that guy. He's not so big and so rough that he would force Janai and Jalen to adjust how they play. There are guys out there who exist who can do that to you. Um, I mean, Zach Eady is an obvious example, the outstanding center at, at Purdue, but you know, Houston's got guys like that. Big, bulky guys that get really physical and just literally displace you, and I'm not sure Auburn's great at that in the front court. But what happens in, in March Madness, the teams with the really good backcourts are the ones that typically get rewarded with long runs. That's what happened in 2019 when Auburn got hot and, and actually ran the table in that NCAA tournament, beating Kansas, North Carolina, Kentucky on the way to the Final Four and, of course, got jobbed in Minneapolis in the Final Four. We're not going to get into that. It's been litigated. It was guard play. It was Jared. It was Bryce. It was Javon as a backup. They had the guards, and they were playing at a really high level. Auburn needs to get there, and I think that's part of what you saw tonight with Denver. Denver's playing good basketball. He is a particularly good defender. He is a good shooter with a nice stroke. He's got to get more confidence. He's been better. I think what you saw tonight is them kind of learning to refashion him a little bit, repurpose him a little bit, see if they can kind of unlock a little more potential from him. Uh, let's see. Stoop Up says, God, I hate Minneapolis. I, I had a decent experience there, but I understand what you're talking to. It's kind of grayish. It's generally coldish. Plus side, that's where Prince is from. Downside, well, there's nothing really notable about it. And I feel like their bar scene closes way, way, way too early. Madison jumps in, says Aiden will still be an electric player at Auburn. He'll adjust, let the game come to him, and start having fun again. He's too talented a player. Freshman blues will wear off in due time. I completely agree with that. Aiden is uh, a good basketball player. He's a good kid. He's not a problem. And they're going to figure out how to get the most out of him. I mean, there really hasn't been a player, if you think about it, that Auburn couldn't – they didn't make – Serious progress towards unlocking. Now, Turbo Jones was a guy that, like, I think ultimately he wasn't good enough. And he's been a good player at South Alabama, but I think that's the level, you know. So I think that's more of a misassessment a little bit than it was not being able to unlock him. But I, I, I do think that Aiden is a good basketball player, and I think he belongs on this level. He's just not quite there right now. And they're working through it. That second group tonight, guys – Unfreaking believable. Let's get over here on the box score. That is an older. I want to take a look at this box score to start with. So this is the second half only. And Auburn uh, played some really good ball in the second half. 51 uh, in the second half. 50, 50 points in the first half. But look at some of these numbers. Even on rebounding, Auburn again, tremendous. Eight assists, four turnovers. And one of those turnovers in the second half was... Uh, when they just they were just giving the ball away late, uh, to as to not score on a completely defeated South Carolina team, but I mean eight assists and three real turnovers again a, a tremendous half of ball handling. Will says AU's death lineup is Denver, KD, CBM, Jalen, and Broom, which they ran with three separate times tonight. I don't know how that exact line did, but it felt like they were doing work. And KD is typical, stand, stood on business tonight. Nine points, but he ended up plus 40 in the plus minus, guys. <laughs> Let me bounce over here to the uh, the full box score. Uh, so when I talk about KD, you can see what I'm talking about. 40, uh, he's plus minus his 40 on nine points. So in 19 minutes on the floor, the Auburn Tigers gained 40 points on South Carolina. That means he stood on business. He was a difference maker on defense. He was a facilitator on offense. 
and he caused problems. And the, the great thing about those of us who are KD enthusiasts, because I think a lot of him, he's overcome a lot in his life, he continues to overcome a lot in his life, is that we see the good KD more often than we ever have before, and we don't see the bad KD very often anymore. We see the okay KD, the mid KD. We see him fairly often. But we don't see the shitty one anymore, and that's good. He's a, he's a much safer guy to deploy and play them. Farm Data jumps in with a super chat, and we, you know how we feel about Farm Data. That guy is an absolute legend. He's a channel legend and a pillar of the community. He says, are, are our bigs better behind the arc than the backcourt? I think statistically speaking, yes. Jalen is Auburn's number one three-point shooter. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Janai, I don't think of him as an ace three-point shooter, but his percentage is probably up to 35% now. So, And he has 20 made threes this year, so he's not just a – he's not sideshow Bob. But, uh, yeah, Jalen is definitely a stretch forward, likes to shoot the three, and when he's hot, he's an absolute mess. Eight of 11 from the floor tonight, five of seven from three. Uh, two rebounds for a power forward is a little alarming, but – I don't think they're going to fuss about it too much. There's just you, you've got to understand that there's going to be games where you can't have him rebounding two balls. Janai having two rebounds as well is a little, again, a little alarming. But the way this game was played, Auburn really kind of pulling them out to the perimeter and saying, "Hey, why don't you mess with us out here?" I'm not as frustrated about that. Who the big rebounders tonight were? I guess Chad. It's kind of a group rebounding effort, wasn't it? Nobody had more than – I mean, Chad had five, and nobody else had more than three. And that was SEMO. Very interesting. Let's see in the chat. Stephen G., appreciate you coming back to our show, bro. Uh, after uh, debuting a couple weeks ago, or at least that, for me it was, uh, I said I'd like to see them experiment with Aiden at the two and Trey on the floor. Try to get Aiden some open looks, get some confidence back, and take some pressure uh, from having to play point. I, I don't think that's how it's going to go, brother. Just because Aiden is a mismatch at two, he's the smallest guy in the rotation. And, yeah, I, I just think he's a guy that shoots better with the ball in his hands. I don't think he's a guy that you're trying to catch and shoot him. I think he's trying to pull up with the ball in his hands. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't I don't think so. I think they stick with Aiden just at one. I, I respect what you're talking about though, just to try to get some versatility in there and maybe different combinations. But yeah. I don't know about that one in particular. Mobile Alum jumps in again. I think that's her third super chat of the night. Could be her fourth. Unbelievable support. How many players are we losing after this season? Wow, you want to bring down the, the, the mood, huh? Don't several guys have a COVID year? How do you like our two new signees? I am blanking on the signees right now. I mean, I know, I know Ja'Kai Howard, who I, I like a lot, as like a transition dude, long, thin, plays wing. Um, went to, had, and just kind of had a weird, I guess, um, high school career in the sense that he went out to – um. The California school, uh, was it Donza or I forget? It's it was Kanye West's vision, Donda, I think it was, and he just didn't he didn't play good out there. He's back over at overtime now, back closer to where he feels comfortable on the East Coast, and he is playing much better basketball. I, I think he's a benefit. And then Pettiford, of course. Good Lord. Thank you for that, Terrence. And also Mobile alum. Tahad Pettiford, I feel like a stranger as well. Uh, absolutely love Tahad Pettiford. He is a weird player in the sense that he is a combo guard. I don't think he's a full-time point guard, even though he has the body of a point guard. He reminds me, I've said this many times, of a guy who played back in the 90s at Arizona and then later for the Raptors and I guess other teams too, but uh, Damon Stoudemire. Left-handed slasher um you know Damon was more of a point guard who also moonlighted at shooting guard I think of Tahad as a shooting guard who would moonlight at point guard but he's a mess in transition he can pull up um and he just has a certain he has that Chad Baker Mazzara like gall about him he's smaller than Chad but he has that confidence in that willingness 
to try shit. And I, I look at that as inventiveness. Nobody can be more inventive than Sharif Cooper was. So, but I think he's kind of in that thought. He tries to plan and scheme up really big moves. And I like that about him. That, to me, tells me it's a player that's working next level. And it's not necessarily going to be those big plays, those crazy plays that help you. It's just the ingenuity. Not a mouse says, that was a muffudging, kicking, chicken, kicking. Man, that's a tongue twister there, isn't it? And yes, it was. Did not expect Auburn. I, I did expect Auburn to win the game. I did not expect Auburn to win by 40. That was a big one. Feel like a stranger says Mighty Mouse FTW. Yeah, is what some people called uh, Stoudemire back in the day. I love Stoudemire. He's one of my favorite players of all time, and I'm stoked about seeing him. Uh, Madison says uh, when Aiden is on, it really creates space on the floor because you can't give him space. Would not see him at the two. Yeah, I just I don't see that. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Hugh says Dylan stays? Question uh, mark. I don't. This is stuff that I mean I don't sit down and talk to the players about this kind of stuff. It's just not something that I would ever discuss with them at this point of the season. You know what I mean? Uh, Dylan, uh, according to what I'm seeing here, would not be eligible for a COVID year because he enrolled in 2021. So he would just be done. Which kind of sucks in a way because, you know, he's now kind of a fully featured version of himself, right? I mean, he's he's a really, really good backup center. And he doesn't give you a lot of trouble anymore. He used to be such a turnover machine. And now he gives you a lot of pluses instead of minuses. Do you know what I mean? Let's see. Tonight he gets you eight points on two of three shooting, four of four at the line, which, again, is incredible the way he has overhauled his shooting technique, and it's actually working for him. Uh, four fouls in 15 minutes, which is kind of how it goes. Um, four blocks for him. I mean, he had a nice night tonight. Will says, Dylan ain't going pro if another year at Auburn is an option. Now, I would agree with that. Plus, Dylan, in the times that I have spoken with him, he has kind of a different view on what he's going to be in his life, that he's going to touch people's lives, not as an NBA player. But, I mean, I think he'll give it a shot. But, you know, there's people you meet that just are like, I'm hell-bent. I'm going to be an NBA player, even if you don't think they are. I'm not the judge of that. Uh, Dylan's got bigger ideas in mind. And I think he was put on this earth to change people's lives through religious type things. And I think he's going to be great at it. Jason jumps in with a super chat. Uh, says, great show, JGT USC uh, defense on Ken Palmer's in the 50s, now in the 60s. <laughs> Kentucky defense is 105 currently. How does Kentucky struggle there, and how does Auburn attack it? I don't know, Jason, uh, enough about Kentucky. I am a Kentucky graduate, and I watch them some. But when I'm watching them, I'm just kind of watching them for shits and gigs, um, and I'm not necessarily paying specific attention to what they were doing. Like last night, I'm so tripped out by Reed Shepard, who was their combo guard, played a lot of point guard last night when I watched him. Uh, It's just that I covered his dad and his mom in college, (laughs) Stacey Reed, and Jeff Shepard, and it's just weird to me that see their kid playing at Kentucky and playing well. I mean, he's a, he's a really good player. He's a difference maker. Uh, they've got Dillingham playing for them, Robert Dillingham, who Auburn liked and really wanted uh, to play at Auburn out of North Carolina, out of the Charlotte area. He played for CP3 Elite. Um, so he's there. So they've got players. they got DJ Wagner, too, although I don't really notice him that much. <laughs> like... I thought he would be just an absolute menace in college, and he just hasn't been that guy yet. Yeah, DJ Wagner shooting 29% from three, 48% from two, 70% from the line. He's getting 55% of the minutes. Like, mm. Looks like he's their like, second or third choice at shooting guard behind Dillingham. Man, Kentucky's just got a lot of players. Like, well, I, let me rephrase that. Their top level players are studs. Dillingham's a stud. Antonio Reeves is a stud. DJ's a stud. Reed's a stud. Justin Edwards should be a stud. He hadn't really played that well. I just think defensively, they they're just not buying in. 
AU two fifty six says UK players. Uh, UK has the players. Auburn has the chemistry. I think Auburn has players too. But I, I I respect what you're saying, and I think you're right that Auburn is a team that, in my opinion, is built more intelligently than Kentucky's. Although Kentucky's team have some really good players too, and it's just a matter of kind of getting them stuck together, you know, and and working. Uh, competently as a group here are the standings as of this moment in the sec alabama a half game up they didn't play i don't think this this rotation so uh south carolina got up one on auburn uh by virtue of i think south carolina won at vanderbilt over the weekend and auburn of course had trouble at florida so they fell a game out but uh, pulled even tonight with that huge win 40 point win and auburn pulls even with south carolina right there Auburn's off week is going to be, or off game is going to be middle midweek next week. So Auburn will be off on the Tuesday Wednesday window next week, with the Kentucky game coming up. Let's see. Terrence says, "Are we going to have to go to the portal for front court help next year?" Yeah, I would definitely think that's going to be a thing, with Kahad coming in. And uh, with Todd coming in and then Ja'Kai, I don't think Ja'Kai is a right out of the gate like superstar starter. I think ultimately you'd like to see him work like Trey where he's an understudy for a year and then maybe he kind of breaks in his second year. Uh, Madison, I, I'm showing Dylan as his first season being the 2020-21 season. So I could be wrong on that. I don't. I don't pretend to know all that stuff. By I'm 51 years old, man. Coming up on 52, I don't remember everything the way that I should, or the way I used to. So I got to look it up. Moby alum is she feels pretty strong that he can he can play another year. I, again, I don't talk to kids about stuff like this in February, so I don't I don't really. And if I ask a coach about it, they just kind of go, "Shit, man, I don't know." Like you know, because they don't. They have been shocked and surprised in both directions by the people that choose to stay or the people that choose to leave, and it's it's just I'm not going to figure that out until April. That's part of the stress of being a college coach now is that, you know what I'm saying, like you used to be able to plan these things out. I remember, you know, eight years ago, Kevin Steele on the football side would literally, you know, and I thought this was very smart, he'd have a board, you know, in his room, and he would stack Okay, here's my number one player at each position, my number two player at each position, my number three player at each position. And he could rely on, you know, the ones going to the NFL and the twos and threes moving up, you know. Sometimes I was always I was baffled that Gus couldn't figure this shit out, but whatever. It's a whole different story. I don't know if basketball players and even football coaches, basketball coaches can still do that. Because, you know, let's say BP is it puts in, it plugs in everybody, you know, all 12 of his guys. You know, why, why, why? Greg wants to know why is Auburn below USCE in the standings when we clearly have the head to head. I would just say it's because, and I don't know, this is the SEC official standings, but it might have something to do with them having 21 wins and Auburn having 20. I don't know. But yeah, if it came to seeding, Auburn would be ahead of them. At least as far as I know. AU 256 asks a good question. Does 14 and 4 get us a title? It'll be close, but I think it does. I was talking about this the other, I think it was in the Florida show uh, last weekend. We were talking about what will their final record be. And I think we came up with 14 and 4, AU 256. I thought Auburn was going to lose one of these next few games. Let me get back over to our main screen so I can see the schedule again. See, I think Auburn's going to beat Kentucky. I, I got a bad feeling about the Georgia game, though. I. I think it's going to take a rally. Auburn doesn't play well on the road. Georgia plays great at home, particularly in the first half. Uh, <laughs> look, at, look at Bob trying to holler at me. Dude, I, I, I will, I will, I will, I promise. I'm just out here babbling right now. I think Georgia's going to be a tougher test than we realize. I mean, because I, I think of Georgia as being kind of iffy, but they will get up on you inside Stegeman, and, and then it's going to be a challenge to pull it out. At Tennessee is going to be a big one. That's tough. That is a tough place to win. Uh, you feel like Mississippi – you feel like these home games you got you got in the bag, but I mean, with Mississippi State and Georgia, but at Missouri you feel like you got to win that, particularly if you're in the middle of a conference challenge race, conference title race. You've got to beat a winless team. 
I don't care if you're at their place or not. So, you know, if I'm ranking the biggest games here, I mean, at Tennessee is the biggest one remaining. I would say home against Kentucky is the next biggest one remaining. And then at Georgia. And after that, it's just stuff that you should be winning. I don't know. If you're going to win a title, you've got to be able to assert yourself when it's time to do that. And that means you've got to go handle business at Georgia. And I know Auburn does not, you know, Auburn tends to drop shit, weird stuff on the road, but mega tiger jumps in as well. says that game should have come with a parental warning label. <laughs> we got to laugh for that, man. That's good. <laughs> I let my son watch Warren and Eagle. It was, uh, Auburn had some really nice runs in that game. Just a couple things real quick. I wanted to mention, I just wrote some notes down a uh, four flagrant fouls in that game, which is a lot, right? I don't, I remember seeing that in a while. Auburn uh, assist to turnover ratio was tremendous tonight. I think they had 22. I don't remember if it was 22 or 24 assists. 22 assists on 36 buckets. Seven turnovers, including one that was just kind of given away. So 22 over six to me. <laughs> Amazing. This is against the top, a top group in the SEC. I appreciate you, Bob. Bob's jumping through with a super chat. We are going to get you on the horn. I'd love to get you on the horn personally. <laughs> I like to do the cha-cha. I have hung out with this guy, and he can cook. Courtney's asking when we can go back. I told her, just hold on. We'll get it done. I also wrote as a note, so patient. I thought Auburn was really paying close attention. We talked about this at the top of the show today. Getting good quality shots. Even if you're threes, get an open shot. Don't be forcing stuff. KD had a bad one. But I thought they really efforted to get good looks tonight, and I thought it paid off. They shot 60-something percent today. Denver playing point guard, we've talked about that. That was a big deal. Uh, South Carolina came in averaging 64 points per game, conceded against SEC opponents. They gave up 101 tonight. That tells you something about what was going on tonight. This is not normal, not standard operating procedure for South Carolina at all. Jalen Harper gets it to 101. I was happy for him. Those guys practice as hard as the varsity guys all year round. They get no love. It was really nice to see him be able to get out there and do that. This is the largest win in Auburn history over a ranked opponent. And anything else? Yeah, I just put down 22 assists. The ball handling was really, really outstanding tonight. Also, CJ says there are chances for Tennessee, I'm sorry, uh, Alabama to lose. They're playing at Kentucky and at Florida. Florida will be a challenge for them. Uh, and then Tennessee at home. Uh, Alabama's a good ball club, but they can get, yeah, they can get a little. They're out there to score the ball. Hey, uh, Bob, hit me, bro. I'm ready for you now. Oh, let's see. Solo says their season high allowed was 74 before tonight. That's by anybody, I reckon. They had a gnarly loss. Was it to Alabama? Was that what it was? They had a really bad loss earlier in the season. I'm trying to look this up here. Yeah, they lost 74-47. Right, so 68. Okay, I see what you're saying now. They were averaging 64, but their high high watermark was 74, and then they give up 101 tonight, so that's big. Let's see, Mobile Alum reminds us that we have, uh, Auburn has a week off between the Kentucky game and the Georgia game, so that's going to help, and it absolutely will. I have to look and see what Georgia's up to. I mean, Georgia's, a, they're okay, which is a hell of a lot better than they were. That's for sure. Uh, Terrence says Bama lacks interior defense. Yeah, they have kind of a stretch for um, Grant Nelson, and he didn't give you a whole lot on defense necessarily. So, yeah, I agree with you. Alabama's got a hole there, but they also score the basketball really well. Mark Sears is a problem constantly. Uh, they've got a couple three-point shooters. Well, there's that kid that keeps hitting against Auburn. <laughs> Terrence says, Bob, hit me. I'm ready for you now. Keep that stuff, will you, private? Keep that stuff private, will you, JG? <laughs> I love it. Uh, AE256 says, missed the drain last Saturday after Florida, but quickly, what the hell was the difference between that game and this one? Auburn just got uh, out of its own head in that Florida game. 
Uh, the ball handling was super bad in that game. Auburn wasn't moving the ball well at all. And I almost – I just feel like they have like a um, – just like a mental block, I think, about playing on the road that they just got to get over. And I mean, I think they will. By the way, somebody asked earlier about our, our bourbon of the night. I had a boozy weekend and I'm, I was drying out, but I might have a little bit of this. The uh, the barrel uh, cask finish series, the Ambarana. Uh, Cuz is getting tired of these Cuz from across the street. He thinks he's get too sweet. He's probably right on that, but it was here, so might as well. Whale driver asked about, Flo- I guess, Florida. I don't know. Corey's in the house. I'm, a, I'm not my Corey. Blake. I'm glad to see Blake and Corey uh, conversating there in the chat. Two guys that are absolute legends. Let's see. CJ says, uh, my take is that we split the regular season with Bammer. Lost at Florida and home against Tennessee while we lose at Tennessee. <laughs> making me laugh man so yeah I, I like where auburn is right now nine and three and let's see i've got them going one two and one three and one four and one five and one from here on out so yeah that would be 14 and four is what i'm predicting although that you got to finish you got to get kentucky done and you got to get at georgia done and i'm assuming the loss at tennessee but i mean who knows Maybe this team finally just figures out how to get stuff done on the road. It can happen. It's not like it's some young team. I mean, this this, this Auburn team's got a ton of experience. Let's get on the horn with Bob. <clears throat> Bob Maplethorpe, the legend himself. What up, Bob? <laughs> you're, you're like, this is the annoying nephew that won't stop tugging on your shirt. <laughs> Dude, how's, are, how's it going? Dude? Anything, any show that I'm running, you are welcome to jump on. We love you, brother. Well, I, I kept, I kept poking and poking, but uh, uh, just uh, appreciate the show as always, and 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 um, I think let's bring the obvious to the front court. Is that this year uh, there's there's no parity like before in basketball, um, it, but from team to team but you look at home and away ranked and unranked we don't know what the hell's going to happen and everybody talks about our guard play you know we don't have the guards we don't have this and then we beat south carolina by 40 tonight well who knows what's going to happen so i i think it's kind of a you know uh if you're up for buying uh um uh or playing bingo or or, or buying uh uh uh, shit, uh, uh, I'm losing my mind. If if you're if you're up for playing the lottery, then uh, this is your year. There's more parity between teams than there ever has been. And have we played like crap on the road? Yes. Uh, neutral, we played pretty decent. But um, th- I mean, we have enough talent to go forward. So, um, who know who knows what can happen? I know. So you know, it, it's it's a like I, I would I would consider this a lottery year if there ever was one. Like we don't know who who will go forward, who will win, and uh, who knows what will happen. Well, that's that's an interesting take, Bob. I really like this Auburn team, though. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm watching my son do Legos, and then my wife is. Uh, doing something else so uh i'm, I'm a little bit distracted but, I understand. but uh, <laughs> same but but well. but but if you think about uh crocodile is the best of this he talks about you know our he'll show you our our uh, numbers on defense home and away and then he'll show you our you know offense which for some reason and this is a question i want to have for you is when we're at home we seem to make the trays so much easier, but so do our opponents. What is it about Neville that makes it so welcoming to, to sink a tray? And, and when we're on the road, why does our offense disappear? Yeah, I think this team just gets jarred and gets away from the mental, uh, like the mental toughness of staying on task when shit is not favoring you. Does that make sense? Like, Look at their shot selection in the Florida game. I thought it was poor. And you look well, at it, it tonight, was, it was, and it was great. 
Well, it, it, it wasn't only shot selection. It was, there was no creating of shot selection. There was no, there was no setup. It was, here's two things. I love Bruce Pearl. We all do, but there's like his inbounds, his quick inbounds under the basket. Normally, like we, I think we have the best percentage in the country of making a quick basket. Really good inbound. at that. Yeah. Right. But then we go to the basic, basic uh, setup of the offense uh, and we start to, you know, let's say we, you know, we, we go on the road. It's like, we, we just forget our basic concept of how to run the offense. So it's like, just you know, perimeter pass, perimeter pass. No, in, no, no inside game, and and we forfeit what our game is. And to me, I don't understand why we. It's X's and O's. Why should it be different from home than away? Well, create the same opportunities and then take your shots. It's like this for everybody, though, Bob. Like these really good teams in in the NCA are not winning all their home games. They're having trouble on the road, even the really good ones. Right. Yeah. And for, forgive me for a minute. I, I was looking at naked boobies for a minute. So I, I, uh, I so couldn't come up with, with I, I was looking at naked boobies for a minute. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with the, the term lottery. Uh, I'm being coerced to the bedroom, but, uh, oh. uh, I will, I will finish this conversation. Okay. <laughs> it's Valentine's day. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And I think there's things you got to attend to brother. I do. <laughs> yeah, like but, but let's finish. But we'll finish this. I mean, uh, the other thing is people talk about elite guard play. Well, you know, uh, you don't have to be elite. Just don't turn the ball over. And I think we saw some improvement tonight uh, um, as far as protecting the ball. And and but I think it's a wild card year. You know, who knows who can go so deep? You know, in the tournament, who knows who can do what? But um, I think we can all be thankful that Bruce has put us in this position uh, year in, year out to at least be bitching about where we, where we should be ranked and how far we think we should go. Hell so yeah. I think that that's, that's a good thing to be, uh, to be thankful for. So, all right, there's another boob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> These should be coming out of two at a time. I, that's been my experience. But... No, if, <laughs> If she knew I was saying this, she would kick my ass. Well, but, there's but, no record uh, of it on the internet. So. Uh, hey, yeah, she'll never know. <laughs> but, um, but you no. Know, bottom line is, uh, thank you for letting me pestering you uh, uh, to make the call. But, but I really think if if we if we continue um, our game. And really, uh, in Crocodile's the best. He told he, b- before the South Carolina game, or I'm not South Carolina. Uh, was South Carolina? Uh, uh, he 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 basically said, no, Florida. Before Florida, Crocodile and I went to the game to the Alabama game, and he said, I don't like the Florida matchup. He said their bigs are active. They crashed the boards, and he said they're going to take us out of the game. He said, "I'm sorry, I like our team, but he said this is a bad matchup, especially on the road." And he he was spot on. So we have to come up with uh, a way to, you know, adapt. And and um, you know, when when Jani can get inside and make his shots and and. Um, do his thing and, and our other contributing task, uh, uh, cast on the inside can, can do their thing. Then, then, um, you know, we're almost unstoppable, but yeah. it seems like it, it's a, you know, when it works, it works when it doesn't, we, we, we have no game We're we're, we're totally flat. Got to work. So, on that. um, yeah. So we, we got to work on, uh, on how do we, uh, how do we adjust and, and go to a, uh, but, but there, but bottom line is there really isn't an in between. And I don't think there's an in between for any other team in the country. So you either execute well at what you do or you just, or you lose. So hopefully we'll go forward and, and, uh, do what we got to do. I hope that you execute tonight, brother. I, I do. Well, um, I can, 
I can put my my bet on that. Vegas will put that at a ninety nine point nine percent. So That's what I'm uh, talking about. So, but uh, and and uh, I apologize for losing focus and and also being overserved by a buddy of mine. But uh, that was his fault, not mine. Who done that? But uh, and we're gonna cook soon again at the farm. So you tell the administrative assistant that uh, she's ready. Hey, are y'all going to be at the game uh, Saturday? No. I don't go to games, bro. I got to run shit here at the uh, headquarters, Brain Drain headquarters. All right. Well, I, I have a very special guest that will be attending with me, mm. but I'll tell you about that later. I look forward to hearing about this. All right. Well, thanks for, for tolerating my babbling, but here's the thing. All things equal. Yes. Everybody on the road seems to suck. Everybody at home seems to dominate. We dominate a little bit more. Our neutral court play is is pretty damn good. So let's flip a coin, flip several coins, and I think we have as good a chance as anybody. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Well, thanks for, for uh, tolerating my pestering. and, and That's I'm always go, appreciated. Uh, You're a stud, man. I appreciate you. You're an important part of the bunker. Very important. Well, well. I'm working on it. I'm trying to be an important part here in the bedroom here in a second. Uh, Lay so, that pipe, uh, bro. Lay that pipe. <laughs> Love you, JG. See you, man. Love you, brother. Bye. <laughs> Bye. There he goes, Bob Maplethorpe. I'm rating the quality of this call at five stars. I hope that guy's going to do good tonight. I, the guy's right. I mean, we, we feel like he's going he's gonna to have a successful night ahead of him. Uh, just for shits and gigs, I pulled up SEC wins and losses uh, on, the, on the road versus uh, at home. Auburn is at the top of the heap at home at 13 and 0. Uh South Carolina is 13 and 1, Mississippi, Ole Miss is 13 and 1, Tennessee's 11 and 1, Alabama's 11 and 1, Florida's 11 and 1. So that's six teams that have at maximum one home loss. However, you switch over to away and you've got Kentucky's 4 and 2, South Carolina's 5 and 3, Alabama, Tennessee are 4 and 3. Texas A&M's 4 and 4 and everybody else has a losing record on the road including Auburn at three and four. So that shows you it's it's overwhelmingly homey, right? And I I was talking to uh, the Welshman period, a.k.a. Neil J., who jumps in the chat here, and he's also the Welshman period on uh, the bunker. He is, he lives in, he's from Wales, but he lives in Scotland. He's kind of uh, coming along as an Auburn fan, and he, he was blown away by the home visitor disparity in college basketball. He's just like, why is it that, it is so hard to win on the road. Um, and I was like, you know, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I mean, because, like, you know, where he's from, where they, they do rugby and, and soccer and stuff, like, I mean, you win at home a lot, but you, it's not like it is in college basketball right now. <sighs> wow, Bob, what a call. He thinks it's a good time to buy a lottery ticket in the world of college basketball right now. I know that. I got that. I also, I also heard about boobs, uh, two of them, but separate. And then also he feels like uh, Vegas has got him in a 99% chance. Probably we call that a one to five uh, in paramutual is what we call it a uh, chance to get it in. So uh, hopefully he's, he's absolutely bringing that down and he would give us reason to applaud on his effort on that. It is a uh, Valentine's day after all uh, administrative assistant is vaguely anti Valentine's day. She's not a fan. She thinks it's hokey and silly, and even going back to when we were dating, I, w I was prepared to do whatever needed to be done, and she was like, please don't. It just bothers me. I said, okay. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, Blake R. had a super chat earlier. Uh, jumping in, we love Blake R. Look at him. Look at that guy. Loving this draining while I lie in bed. Hell yeah, JGT. Hope everyone treated their ladies nice today. Blake, of course, our uh, East Coast um, ambassador. Uh, an absolute legend out there on the East Coast. Bringing it. Corey Debs the same Blake round two after the drain. Hey, now. Uh, and also, Blake said, done, Corey. Bedtime now. Uh, well, draining for now while I'm still awake. That's what I'm talking about. Stoop Up says, it's been two minutes. Bob ought to be back now. <laughs> he's saying he's finished and he's coming on back. I like it. <laughs> Looks like Madison's going to bounce as well. Enjoyed having you, Madison. I have a daughter named Madison, so I just go to this de facto spot where uh, Madison's a girl, but I'm not trying to assume anything. I'm just saying that my daughter's Madison. 
She goes to South Alabama. She's going to be a nurse. Yeah, I like this better than I remember. This barrel uh, cask finish series, the Ambarana. Had an opportunity to buy more of this the other day, and I didn't do it. it. Has a really nice finish on it. It has kind of a candy finish. Very, very sweet. By the way, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but if you watch our bourbon blend, which we do on Thursday nights, Courtney and I do, 8 o'clock Central, we found us a bottle uh, down in the Florida panhandle that was... We're very fired up about it. Uh, there she is. Administrative assistant herself is in the chat. She says, Valentine's Day, thumbs down. It's a silly Hallmark holiday. I did not know that the administrative assistant was still up. <laughs> Flat picking said this loss might have knocked South Carolina to quad six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did not know you were still up, Cordy. You need to go. You got to work early tomorrow, too. So be smart. Yeah, be smart. Be smart. What else do we have to discuss here? I've gone through all my notes. We had a great call from Bob. We've got Courtney in the chat, my outstanding wife, who uh, we've been together 30. God, our first day was March 4th, 1992. So we're almost, uh, what, 32 years together? Married for like 26 or 27. I don't know. She's a cool-ass chick. Uh, let's see. Mobile M says she's about to bounce. Appreciate your support, young lady, as usual. Uh, Travis J jumping in with a super chat. One of our awesome football uh, brain drainers. I haven't seen him as much of basketball. Says, Jay, it's been a minute. Much love and war eagle. Appreciate you, Travis. Give you an applause on that one. Glad to see you back over here. And thank you for super chatting, sir. I'm looking forward to football season next year with you because I think they're going to be better. They're going to at least be more intriguing. I think they'll still lose some gains, but they're not going to. Well, they're going to have to do some portal work, though, though, aren't they? They still got work ahead, personnel-wise. But you think with Will Redman coming in and some of the other things they're doing off the field, maybe they'll be in a better position to start pulling, you know. Not the way that Bob does, but the way that, you know, you'd want to see Auburn do that. Uh, Terrence says, I used to always give pictures of myself to my partners for Valentine's Day with the note, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know how that would go over. <laughs> Snoop Up's agreeing with Cordy about this being kind of a fake made-up holiday. This was a, a show that I wasn't sure we were going to run because, well, we're running shows for every show, every game now, but um, it's late. I mean, for our friends that have to go to work tomorrow, which is pretty much everybody, uh, we're 10.49 in the Central Time Zone, 11.49 in the Eastern Time Zone. And I know a lot of folks just didn't even check in because it's too late, you know. Stoop up says he would call, but he's just fried mentally. Dude, I totally get it. Uh, maybe we'll be in a better spot on Saturday. I'm looking forward to that. Tori says Courtney is the best. That's what I like to hear. I'm a big fan of Tori myself, but, uh, yeah, well, I mean, of course, Courtney's my one and only. I've got her name tattooed on me. That's how strongly I feel about her. Uh, IU256 says QB in the spring portal eyes. Uh, yeah, somebody was asking me. Yeah, I was on a uh, podcast the other day with my friend Chris Lee, who runs a podcast, uh, well, it's like a video show called the Southeastern 14 on YouTube, and he asked me about that. He's like, hey, who's going to be quarterback at Auburn next year? And I was like, it's somebody who's probably not on the roster. That's just my opinion, though, guys. It could be wrong, but I just don't see I don't see it yet. I'm just not sure about uh, Peyton. <laughs> CJ said he had an unfortunate event happen today, so he ain't feeling up to a call. Either. That's fine. That's fine. It's a midweek game. I'm just glad to have gotten Bob on the horn, really. Uh, it's awesome when that happens. And a whale driver says he's at work right now. Airport standby. Ouch. I hope you get that, that flight, brother. You get to where you need to go. It'll be tough. Uh, Flat Picking says, I'll be interested to see how we respond energy-wise on Saturday. You just, you've got to believe, right? Kentucky inside Neville that they would be ready to go because they're almost always ready to go in Neville. But, yeah. Stoop Up says, enjoying the distraction tonight, Jay. Hey, man, I'm here. I'm here to help. And you've been, you've, you, you've, you've carried us so many times, bro, through the years. 
especially in the, uh, well, I mean, I don't want to say COVID because that was a while ago, but you, you sure were good at that point. Uh, CJ says car wreck. God, I'm glad you're all right, bro. CJ uses car professionally, so it's a big deal there. Blake R says, are you guys doing bourbon blend tomorrow night? Yeah, that's definitely the plan. I mean, Lord willing. 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock in your time zone. And we'll be doing a uh, tasting of the, I did mention this earlier, we got a hold of some Old Forester 1924, the uh, coveted 10-year purple top Old Forester. And you guys know we're big old faux fans, so we're very folk, uh, very fired up to have found that. And also, we got our hands on, we did not drink it because we don't have that kind of money, but we got our hands on a bottle of Daniel Weller, which if you bourbon taters like me, know just how crazy a bottle that is i think that retails at well whatever the sm msrp is like four or five hundred bucks but on secondary that's a i don't know fifteen hundred two thousand dollar bottle i don't know there he is he's checking in uh, Stephen w who you may have heard on the air just a little while ago says thanks for putting up with my overserved words and shenanigans tell courtney to take care of the businessmen's tonight no offense but she is my favorite, <laughs> period, one. <laughs> yes, Courtney and I, along with some other bunker legends, including uh, Russ 47, and uh, who else was out there? Ah. Oh, Russ 47's kid was out there. Who's a stut? What kid? He's like, he's like 40. And, uh, Bob was cooking for us, and I mean, it's not even fair to say like he was cooking. He was, he was, it was an artistic cook, an artistic barbecue cook that was beyond anything that I had really experienced. Because I'm not a big barbecue guy, I kind of I went in not knowing what to do, not knowing where to put my hands. And uh, Bob absolutely knocked it out of the park. His uh, stepmom was an amazing, truly amazing uh, hostess out there as well he also drops an if a boer dot mm hmm uh let's see <laughs> uh, e256 is really interested in what y'all think about that 1924 i'm gonna tell you it has an amazing nose bro probably the best nose i've ever had with a bottle of bourbon so i'll just leave it at that i've only had it once though so we're gonna have it again tomorrow in the air Also got a haul video from the Florida Panhandle that was pretty good. And then we also were thinking about doing some blind barrels. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. I should have videoed that. Me and Courtney and Cousin Becky did a blind barrels thing the other day uh, in conjunction with a company that I'd have to get more information on. And uh, what's that guy's name? The dude who's like the bourbon master. He's like an Iraq veteran. I forget his name. You guys would know it. AU256 says retail. It was at a retail location. It was marked up, but not exorbitantly so. We were actually surprised by the price. Because those bottles, I think, retail are a hundred ish. And usually on secondary, they're two twenty five ish. And we found it at retail for one seventy. Which is still high, but it wasn't like exorbitant, so we went ahead and snatched one. We were very fired up to see it. So we'll do that on the, on the bourbon blend. Uh, as far as Auburn basketball goes, again, really comprehensive, strong, strong W tonight. Terrence is going to bounce. Appreciate you, Terrence. And I hope to see you on uh, on Saturday, brother. Five o'clock tip uh, for that one. We will get that going uh, afterward. Hopefully we will uh, get a little bit crazy that night. We'll, we'll try to get um, a J Head on the horn and uh, the various miscreants here at AuburnSports.com. CJ does update us on this car situation. Was not a work-related accident. Hoping the car is okay. Yeah, that's an important part of the process for you, isn't it? Important part of the, the calculus, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Whale Driver says, if Auburn is in Memphis, Memphis for the first round, who are you all sending? Well, I would think Henri and uh, Stolze would be the choice on that one i'm not even sure if at this point i would even go to a final four because i just feel like i gotta do stuff here like if auburn gets to the final four we're gonna be doing shows you know like 
probably twice a day, every day, and I'd need to work out of here. I don't know. I went 19, but I just don't know if I would now. So that's the situation. Whale driver. I hope that you're going to get on that flight, though, bro. It's important to me. Uh, yeah, we'll probably just wrap it up there, though, guys, honestly. I think it was, you know some of our big hitters are already tapping out, and I know it's, it's one of the, uh, you know, it's a midweek game, kind of late. Anyway, Auburn, comprehensive W right there, 101-61 to 61 over a team that's very good. South Carolina, again, tied currently with Auburn for second place in the SEC. I still think Auburn's got to worry about Tennessee and Alabama more in the SEC race, but uh, we'll worry about that a little bit later. AE-256 is going to bounce as well. A uh, couple things I want to mention. As I've, as I've said, we got Bourbon Blend tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Check it out on our channel. You can just type in Bourbon Blend JG or Bourbon Blend J and Courtney, whatever, uh, and subscribe to that channel if you don't mind. It's free. Also, uh, we got the game Saturday night, 5 o'clock. Also, we've got the Bunker Orange Beach event, which is going to be the weekend after a day. I think it's – I don't want to give you dates. It's the weekend after a day. We're going to have a shindig down in Orange Beach – that will be well attended. I'll be there for sure. Administrative assistant will be there for sure. Uh, Chip Chip will certainly be there. Mrs. Chip Chip. Uh, CJ said he's coming. His dad's coming. Uh, I believe BP Rockman said he was coming. Um, I think Ornatius is going to be able to make that one. I think I said Mobile alum already. She's coming for sure. So there's going to be a ton of folks. 413. Thank you, Chip Chip. Uh, information is pinned atop the bunker. You know, where, when, all that kind of stuff. So we'll be doing that. Don Proper Dickin in the house. Don. We were mentioning you the other day. You know, that Bayern Munich game was nearby your location there in southern uh, Holland. So I don't know if you were watching that bad boy. I don't know how you feel about Germans. You may be sick of them. Maybe you prefer Belgians. I don't know. You're kind of nestled in that, that little area where they're all around you. Appreciate you, Don. Hey, you taxman says, great show tonight. Appreciate you being here too, man. Thank you for jumping in with us so i'll wrap it up there guys we'll make let's make great decisions let's finish out this week great got a big game saturday night looking forward to it i don't i've covered so many games in my career i don't really give a shit usually but man this run right now that they're on the florida game i was really up for south carolina game i was really up for kentucky game i'll be really up for i think this is a this is a team it's so nice to be somebody that is involved with auburn basketball and you go into every game thinking they got a chance to kick this team's ass every single time out it don't always happen, but it's nice to be in the Auburn sphere and the Auburn world with a team like this. It's a lot of fun. All right, I'll wrap it up there, guys. I will see you guys uh, Saturday night. Until then, keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Peace. <laughs>